hi welcome back to g's class so we're going to continue this um now it's up to part where um i made a little bit of uh, leaf and shadow a little bit of brighter parts now i'm going to add a little more color to pop this um you know trees out and also be able to finish that tree okay so i'm going to use brown color dark brown which I made out of um, Van Dyke brown color. Now I'm going to use that earthy yellow color again, which is called yellow ochre. And I'm going to mix burnt sienna color, which is a little orange color that is mixed into brown, okay? So I'm using a little more paint this time. So when you use saturated color, over the parts where it's actually rounded where is the parts that are closest to you then it tends to pop more out like pop the object out okay so that's kind of the keys that you can think of as we learned before uh, i'm doing repeating vertical and horizontal lines but don't do it too obvious that like you're only using that marks you can sometimes go diagonal you know um also it's important to change the colors and also the size of the brush marks and the shape of the brush marks you can't always use the same thing because it will only make the painting look like a pattern or you know um not a nature object you know what i mean Okay, I'm gonna fill that part because it's dark over there. Okay, and I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown and orange, like red brown color to add more colors over here. Some like, you know, rough tree marks. And then mix more yellow ochre color. You see, like I'm not only using vertical and horizontal lines I'm trying to add more you know random marks to it and then I'm gonna mix the gray color to put it down put it down yellow color again doing red on red skill water it down a little bit and then put brown color again some of the parts you know not everywhere and i'll say if you were doing a lot of vertical moves in the first layer i recommend putting little dots or um horizontal lines on the second layer with a very limited uh, area so you can bring some diversity of the shapes and tree effect to the painting, okay? I mix green color, Viridian color, went to the red brown. It makes a nice dark brown color as well. Uh, without using only the, you know, Van Dyke brown, I like to mix different colors. Now I'm going to use a little bit of red purple color into that color that I just used. And then probably put some marks here and there. I'm not using this everywhere, but you know, very limited area. See? Okay. And then I'm going to use a little bit of light green into that color and it makes a nice earthy like brown color that is mixed a little bit with green olive green almost like you know mix that yellow ochre again into that color and so make it even more olive green uh, ish color and then i think that's too strong so i wash my brush um wiping the colors out a little bit filling that part right and then now I'm going to use that brown, I mean, a light green color again. Sometimes it says permanent green in your palette. It could be 
something else when I do leaves I don't use the same brush marks I do very random things as we practiced before scrubbly you know and I'm gonna mix that little color green into the color that I just used and probably put a little bit underneath of that because the light is coming from the like top to you know ground right the light never comes from like bottom to up unless you do use artificial light right scrubbling scrubbing then i'm gonna use that yellow color into that color so make it more like olive green scrubbing 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 the green color use one more green the colder green color and then i'm gonna mix that uh purple color i just used because you can use that color to sometimes darken the leaves it makes a real nice color into the painting see i told you you don't only have to use the colors that i suggest you can actually make your own too so i'm gonna mix some orange color into the colors that i was using Make some tree color or dry first. And then I'm gonna darken some parts. Sometimes I use only tip, right? Sometimes I use the body of the brush. Okay. So if you keep like going back to watch what I do with my brush marks, um, you can learn a lot from it actually. Um, without just you know listening to what I say. Sometimes it's better to just go back and watch it again. Doesn't really take that much of time. Just think that you're watching Bob Ross videos, even though I'm not Bob Ross. You know. Okay. Going to use some purple color. Purple color. Jeez, don't forget. Mix some brown color into it. So brown color, not a vertical, uh, horizontal line, because I see more vertical over there, right? So now. See how this looks too empty? So I'm going to mix a little bit of ultramarine color with the, the Van Dyke Brown. Do the second layer to indicate that that's the darker part. So we're doing dry on dry, dry to dry skill, which makes the second layer to, and then I'm like using very dark color only with the tip. I'm not darkening everywhere. I'm to pick and choose some parts that can be darker. Not everywhere again. Okay. Maybe branches over here. Right. Some parts are darker, some parts are not. So you can't just darken everywhere. See? Gotta like pick and choose. Okay. Then I'm going to put some brown color into the trees to practice. Practice. Do the same thing as you did from the left. Again, you see how imprint the highlights are? Gonna leave some highlights. Okay. And then because the tree goes like outside, it disappears. So I'm going to put some of the the gray color over here too. Okay. Um, now I'm going to move on to that parts, but I want to show you like how to make some leaves. Um, I'm going to mix that light green color into yellow color. 
So scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. See how random that is? Scrubbing, and then I'm gonna mix that dark green plus gray color. So I'm doing wet to wet as well. Scrubbing, scrubbing the color. Green color. Dark green. lemon yellow into that green color you used before a little more light green there's a little one there's a big one random marks doesn't have to be you gotta track down where the branches are but not like you have to make like leaf shape you know you're using tip of the brush most of the times. Little about it at the end of the brush. Not so much of the body of the brush. So that means you gotta have some quality brushes that are not too rounded uh, at the end of the tip of the brush. So it's not, not too worn out, I meant. Um, so that's beautiful um and i'm going to use some of the darker green color that mix it with the gray color to in um show how some of the leaves are in the back of the leaf the front leaves so that it can contrast the sum of the leaves that are in the front and closer to you so you always got to have some you know that dull, dull grayish you know, leaves that are in the back of the trees, okay? So I'm going to use ultramarine. I love ultramarine color, guys. I'm not kidding. I use this all the time. It's the best color in the earth. It's a very important color for any paintings, any paintings. If you do acrylic, it's important if you're doing I mean, it's up to what type of painting you're doing, but if you're doing something representational or even not even that, like to darken some parts, to contrast the good colors, you always need ultramarine color. Yeah. It took like two years for me to pronounce that color though. I used to say like, ultramarine. I didn't know how to say it. I practiced though, so. English is not your first language. If you can't pronounce some of the words, don't give up. It will happen if you practice. Mix a little bit of orange. Okay. A little bit. And I'm gonna mix red brown color. It's happening. I like it. I'm using a little bit of dry brush too because tree can be dry on the body of the tree, you know? It's not always so watery. Let's take that dark color to darken some parts out. Use that um, reddish, like red and orange -ish color back to the trees. And using that light green color. 
see how much I'm changing my color over time. Like I'm not e I'm not using the same color ever. Like after two or three brush marks, I'm constantly changing the colors. That way, it's not so childish. And your painting is gonna be at least ten times better. I'll say. The lines. Tree has some gaps sometimes, so you gotta do that, depict that in the painting. The horizontal lines are very important because it normally cracks the vertical or the horizontal. You know? Yes, sometimes it cracks in like very random shape, normally, what I say. Like, it's easier to understand that way. But don't mean that you repeat that all the time, okay? So now, I'm showing you guys some of the parts of the trees. We'll continue this the next week to finish, okay? Alright, thank you for watching. And I hopefully um, you guys enjoy this, okay? Thank you.